Hello everyone and welcome back to the garage. Behind me I have a 2002 GMC Sierra 1500 pickup truck. The unique thing about this truck is it is equipped with a rare feature that is not very common these days anymore but was offered at one point as a $7,000 option on these trucks and that's called the quadra steer option. This is a four wheel steering system which allows the rear wheels to turn up to 15 degrees. This decreases the truck's turning radius. You can make much sharper turns. It's very nice when you're towing a trailer, backing one up. And due to lack of sales, they started to reduce the cost of that option. It got all the way down to $1,000, I believe, before General Motors ultimately canned the whole idea. This only lasted from 2002 to 2005. It was equipped on certain GMC, Sierra, Yukon, uh, and Chevrolet Silverado and Suburban 2500 vehicles. These unfortunately had a very common problem with the rear steering position sensor failing. Water would accumulate in the assembly and it would all settle at the bottom. And as you'll see on this truck here when we raise it up, the sensor is on the bottom of the steering gear assembly and hence that's where all the water runs, corroding the sensor, destroys the sensor, it's no longer good. The vehicle's computer can no longer tell what angle the rear wheels are at and as a result you'll get a trouble code which we'll go into here for a little bit. You'll also get a service four-wheel steer message displayed. The four-wheel steer button will become an operative and in the case of this truck your wheels may be stuck at a wrong angle. So now you're going down the highway straight, but the vehicle's dog tracking because the rear wheels are towed out at a certain angle. I have got what I believe will be the fix to this. And there's only one catch though. The problem is the sensor has failed on this truck. It can no longer determine the angle of which the rear wheels are at due to water contamination. Remember how we talked about earlier that this option was only available from 2002 to 2005? Not only was it short produced, not only was this the only manufacturer that used it on a vehicle this size, the options did not sell very well and as a result not many parts were made. I searched everywhere for a rear steering position sensor for this truck and I could not find it for any less than $1,500. The owner of the truck has decided that he wants to fix it, he wants the rear steering option to work still, so he's okay with spending the money on it. So we're going to go ahead and put the sensor in the truck, see if this takes care of our problem. The fact that these used sensors that mostly come out of salvage vehicles are selling for up to $3,300 is just absolutely insane. That just goes to show you how rare this part really is. So all that being said, I'm going to raise the vehicle up here on the lift, give you a little tour of the vehicle, the features and how the steering system works. And we're going to take apart the rear steering on it and see if this sensor fixes the problem. I hope it does because that was a really expensive part. Inside the vehicle it's pretty obvious that the vehicle is equipped with four-wheel steer as you have the button to turn the feature on, off, and select tow mode. There are three different modes. There's two-wheel steer, there's four-wheel steer, and there's four-wheel steer tow. When the tow option is selected the steering angle is decreased from 15 degrees to 12 degrees. Two-wheel steering disables the rear steering completely. You'll notice the warning message over here on the left, service four-wheel steer. A generic scan tool is not going to read these codes. You will need a Tech 2 or equivalent. Using the Tech 2, we're going to build the vehicle. In this case, we have a 2002 light duty truck and we're going to select chassis this is an all-wheel drive model so we'll select K once it establishes communications with the vehicles modules we'll be able to read codes and data and find out what's going on we'll select a rear wheel steering option select diagnostic trouble codes we'll see what code has been set rear steering position sensor circuit so that's the code that we're going to use and look up in service information and see what's going on i have a feeling that that sensor has just gone bad 
So as a result, it just locks up, defaults to where it's at right now. We'll uh, we'll go from there. We'll see what we find. But let's go underneath the truck. Okay, underneath the truck, it's pretty simple. You have your rear differential and a steering gear, which is pretty much molded into the rear differential assembly. You have your electric motor. Above the spare tire here, you have your control module up there. You can see all the wires and connectors going to it. You have some tie rods, inner and outer tie rods here. Same on the other side. You have knuckles, and your axle basically allows it to pivot, just like so, up to 15 degrees. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. The sensor we're going after is behind this little protective plate here. Here's the plug for it right here. So we have to take this little protective plate off, those three bolts right there, drop that out, take the little cover off, and let's see if there's any water inside that may have damaged that sensor. This protective plate means business. Look how thick that is. It's a heavy thing. Three 18 millimeter bolts that hold that on. And now we can pry the bottom cover off here You'll need to use a little hammer and a chisel to kind of loosen this little cover up. And after that, this cover will pop off. And there is our sensor. Unplug it here. Now these are size 15 Torx screws, and there's four of them here that hold this in place. And as you can see, they're pretty rusted and corroded. Now, let me say this first. I do not recommend you do this with a new sensor, but since we're replacing this one, this is the old one here, I'm not too worried about it. I would rather take a chance of damaging the old sensor, which appears to already have been damaged by water even further, than I would round out the head of one of these bolts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the Torx bit with the bolt just like that. And I'm going to give it a light tap with the hammer here. And what that's going to do, not only will that help shock this corroded and rusted bolt loose, but it also helps the Torx bit to seat firmly in the head of the Torx bolt. Then you take your little ratchet here, and the bolt comes out nice and easily. No rounded off head, no broken bolt. You don't have to worry about extracting anything. And there you go. Okay, all four screws are out, as you can see. Let's take the sensor out here. And as you can see, the rust in there, water contamination, that's what I was expecting. Not only that, but take a look at this, guys. Let me zoom in here. Look inside there. Look how that's broken. Yeah, there's our problem. So my theory is what happened here the sensor seized up internally due to corrosion, water, rust, and then this little plastic gear, you'll see how the gear's supposed to look on the new one, just split and broke. So there we go, we definitely found our problem. So here are the two sensors side by side. The water intrusion, is that even a word? <laughs> the sensor that had water intrusion here and broke off the little piece of it there and our replacement sensor. Now, GM tells you multiple times in the replacement procedure to not adjust the angle of this sensor. Here's the only problem though, the wheels, the rear wheels were turned and I could not get them to move with uh, the scan tool or the electric motor. So what you have to do is you have to take a 21 millimeter socket here on a ratchet wrench and you're gonna turn it. And notice as I turn the wrench, see how the gear moves? Very slightly, not much at all. I'm just gonna eyeball the rear wheels because I don't have an alignment machine in here. I'm gonna eyeball these rear wheels and get them as straight as I possibly can. Then, I'm going to use the scan tool and line up the wheels accordingly. The way the computer looks at the data from the sensor is, when the voltages are both measuring a certain amount at the same time, there's two, two sensors in here, and they both measure different voltages depending on the position. 
when they measure the same readings, that's when the sensor is lined up properly. And as such, that's when your rear, rear wheels should be straight. So I'm kind of doing this the hard way, so to speak, but I don't have an alignment rack, so I, there's nothing I can really do. I'm gonna try to straighten this the best that I can with the 21 millimeter socket, and we will go from there. Okay, the new sensor is installed. Got the electrical connector here. Put a little bit of dielectric grease on it just for good measure. And go ahead and plug that in to the connector here. Now, need to look at scan tool data and make sure that the wheels are straight. Make sure that this uh, sensor here is measuring straight. And if everything looks good, we should be able to calibrate the sensors and take it on a drive and see if it goes down the road straight. Put this little cap back on and give it a little tap with a hammer. Seat it back into the position it was in before. On the Tech 2 here, I'm looking at the rear wheel position voltages. And as you can see, they're pretty close, 2.51 and 2.43. So we're really close. I noticed that the service four-wheel steer message was no longer on. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to look for codes. Let's make sure we don't have any codes set. I cleared them and then cycled the ignition. As you can see, no codes, so that's good. The only concern I have now is all three lights are on, but hopefully when we do our alignment here, that clears that up. To access the alignment function, we're going to go to Special Functions, and we're going to go down here to Learn Alignment. The vehicle's in park. The ignition is on. Hit Continue. We're going to Continue. Turn the ignition off. Perform necessary adjustments, which we already have. Start the engine. Rear wheel should be in the center position. Continue. Now I don't know, they're not exactly centered because the voltages aren't quite exactly the same, but let's see what happens. We're gonna turn the steering wheel to the left and then to the right and then straight ahead. So we're gonna go left, right, and then center. Put it right in the middle there and continue. There we go. The rear wheel steering system will default to two wheel steer mode. Drive the vehicle to verify proper four wheel steer operation. As you can see, now it's showing two wheel steer. So let's exit the procedure here. Now, if we hit four wheel steer here, let's see if it works. You guys ready? Yeah, look at that. Ooh. -hoo. A little squeaky, but it's working. Look at that, guys. Four-wheel steer. All right, let's go take it for a drive. Let's go take it on a drive and see if it tracks straight. I have no clue what to expect because like I said, I don't have an alignment rack, but I got it centered the best that I could just by visually looking at it. And our four wheeler, four wheel steer option is on. And man, it's crazy. You can really feel the back end of this thing kick out when you make even just a slight turn. As you guys probably saw in that clip when I backed out of the driveway, just a slight turn of the wheel, and man, it, it really kicks it out. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes. Well, let's get going on a straight road here, and let's see how we did. Wind this six liter out. Yeah. Oh, look at that, guys. Oh, it looks beautiful. You know, it's a little bit to the left, but considering I did this, 
uh, without an alignment rack and just by visually looking at it, I am super happy with this. This is great. I expected it to be, you know, way out to the side like that, but no. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. You don't need an alignment machine. Just look at it. Use your God-given eyes. <laughs> All right, now let's see how sharp of a turn I can make up here. I gotta turn around here. So I got about a street's width here. Uh, let's see if I can make this turn. I think I can. Oh, wow. Holy mackerel. <laughs> the thing turns sharp. <laughs> this is great. Oh, I love it. Someone please bring this back. Ford, GM, Ram. One of you guys, please bring this back. This is awesome. Yeah. All right, well, there we go, guys. I'm going to call it fixed. It's working. Four-wheel steer is working. There's no warning lights. I did read the codes on this ABS light here, and it's just a left front wheel speed sensor, so maybe we'll see if the owner wants to take care of that or not, but... At any rate, I am super happy with it. I mean, look at that. It's it's straight. It's perfect. <laughs> I'll just start calling myself an alignment machine, I guess. This is awesome. So there you go, guys. An interesting opportunity to service and repair this four-wheel steer vehicle. It's a unique experience. If you get the chance to drive one, try it out. It's pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in the next repair video. Take care.